Hello, Kiss Army. I have returned with some new comic reviews, and of course they are now always brought to you by my own works. I have the Red Knight comic book. Issues 1 and 2 are out, and uh, the uh, book Caprice and Other Stories. It's a collection of short stories in Navala form. And uh, there'll be information at the bottom where you can uh, order those uh, books. Uh, also, I'll probably put my uh, Twitter uh, feed so you can uh, check out my incredibly hilarious uh, ramblings. Uh, anytime I have a brain fart, I uh, put it down there. So, let's get some comics. And I'm going to be reviewing these comics right here. Now, let me just get started by uh, telling you... Uh, with this whole new DC 52 uh, reboot thing, uh, a whole bunch of new number ones have come out, a whole new series have restarted, and I can tell you easily, uh, of all the new books that have come out, uh, the one that is really has me excited month in, month out, and I love reading it, is easily the best book that's come out since the 52. It's Daredevil. Yeah, Daredevil. This is a fantastic book from uh, Mark Wade, and uh, let's, let's see, what's his name? I, uh, I'm still familiar. Marcos Martin doing the art, and uh, Marcos Martin has kind of almost a Herb Temple quality to his uh, work, with maybe a little Steve Ditko. Uh, there's just such this cool kind of I don't know I don't want, I don't want to use the word kind of quirky, but maybe it is quirky, uh, and still establishes superhero looking art style and action all uh, you know here and here but still like here's like here's ox from the uh, the old fixers gang you know from the old spider-man uh uh comics where you know uh, ditko actually you know this was a big highlight for this character's uh run and boy i mean it just looks perfect and uh, it doesn't even look that you know old school it doesn't look that outdated uh there's a nice kind of classic look to it uh, what's going on? Daredevil has been um, brought on to this wrongful termination suit uh, uh, started by this uh, blind employee uh, who uh, got fired for no reason. And it turns out to be this kind of huge conspiracy thing. And he was actually fired because his boss was actually trying to protect him uh, uh, because he knew like if it had got out that his company was dealing with the... Uh, Latraria is Latrarians. What's Doctor Doom's country's La Latravia or something like that? Oh, uh, and a combination of them and Hydra. Like, boy, that's that's not good news to know about. Uh, so uh, Matt Murdock learns about this pretty quickly. Uh, and I gotta tell you, this opening sequence where he takes on the snipers is fucking awesome uh, and also hilarious. Uh, great use of uh, Matt Murdock's powers, by the way. Oh. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into this, but, uh, oh boy, this is some great stuff. I loved it a lot. Uh, five Ram Chips. Uh, so far, five issues have been fantastic. Thank you, guys. Now, uh, here's one of my other favorites from the DC reboot. A DC book called Action Comics, and this is number do. And uh, I believe that's Spanish for, for uh, something, the second one. I think. Anyway, uh, when last we met our uh, all-new heroes that we've never seen before, uh, who are totally updated and cool, uh, I think his name is Super uh, Man. Anyway, uh, this is issue is written by Grant Morrison and uh, drawn by Rags Morales and Brent Anderson helping out. Now, of course, uh, I kid, of course. Superman is uh, running through the city, uh, righting wrongs. Meanwhile, he's got uh, Luthor and General Lane uh, on his ass setting up a trap, and they got him. Uh, but basically, it seems like his powers haven't really uh, reached their climax yet. So when he's uh, hit by a train, by the way, he's saving everybody on that train, but it kind of takes him down. Uh, he's weakened to the point where they're able to take him in, and they hook him up to this chair and they're performing all sorts of hideous experiments on him and uh luthor is totally cool with this because he doesn't consider him human he can keeps calling him it matter of fact he corrects people he keeps calling him him uh to the point where john henry irons who shows up remember that guy's going to become steel uh he's part of this and he quits just out of disgust seeing uh, what's going on 
Uh, meanwhile, they're testing the cape. The cape apparently is invulnerable too. I'm guessing that is. Uh, I, I, I think they're going with the whole the cape was his blanket thing in the rocket ship or something like that. Uh, so you know that's completely bulletproof. I like how they they show it being tested, but you know it's already been shot at. No, uh, they don't you know go through the whole thing. It's exciting enough to see the fact all these rounds laying there. Uh, meanwhile, Lois is trying to you know figure out what's what's this whole big secret thing uh, that her dad's involved with. I mean the gas this fucking guy and uh, Luth. My favorite moment in this is when Luthor thinks he's got him. He thinks he's has a gotcha uh, to really weaken this alien uh, that he's caught because he shows him this thing. He he believes that he's a shapeshifter and this is his original form. This dead goat thing, whatever, that they've caught previously. And all Clark can do is laugh his ass off. Uh, and then, of course, what follows is his escape scene. Uh, boy, this is pretty exciting. Now, of course, he isn't as, as powerful as, you know, he normally is. And, uh, let's see, he does run past the ship, which tells him, hey, you know, learn some secrets from us later. Hey, hey, you know, go take care of your shit. Uh, and it says it just like that. It's, it's Kryptonian. Oh, boy, what exciting stuff. This is five RAM chips. Oh, loved it a lot. Oh, yeah, I'm going to keep reading this. I'm not reading the other Superman title. Um, not because it's bad or anything like that. Um, I'm just, you know, uh, I'm doing one Batman book and one Superman book. And uh, this is the book to get. Uh, I think this is very exciting. Uh, I, I, I don't like rebooting uh, Superman's history every, like, I don't know, 12 issues, it seems like now. Uh, I was very fine with the John Byrne uh, origin, but uh, boy, boy, boy. If you're going to do it, might as well do it really well, and that's what's going on here. Now, Justice League Dark, number two, uh, by, who is this? Peter Milligan and uh, Michael Janney. Oh, beautiful art, by the way. Lovely, lovely. Uh, the colors and the figures drawn here. There's some really uh, lovely action scenes. Uh, I love the sequence with uh, Zatanna on her uh, her uh, motorcycle. And she runs into this huge, horrific scene uh, on the city block. Uh, all the art is just absolutely beautiful, i got to say. Uh, all, let's, let's see the sequences uh, with Zatanna and the boring crap with Dead Man and Dove which goes on for a long time, but at least it's nice to look at. It's really painful to read. Uh, meanwhile, we have the other characters trying to figure out what's going on here, uh, and then there's more stuff with Dead Man and Dawn and, and more. Uh, and then it ends. Uh, I really hate Hawk and Dove. I've decided, instead of being indifferent towards them for all these years, I despise them. I wish they were dead. I wish they never came back. I wish they would fucking die again and never come back. I think they sully, I think they ruin every comic they step into. Like Birds of Prey, they like ruined every scene they were in. Uh, I really enjoyed number one, and I didn't enjoy number two, and Hawk wasn't even in it. Uh, just Dove. All we need is Dove to ruin a uh, comic book. Um, I, I think they would ruin any comic. They would ruin uh, Zack Snyder, not Zack, uh, Scott Snyder's uh, Batman. I think they'd ruin that if they stepped into it. I, th I think I would be disgusted if they showed up in Red Knight, my own comic. Although I would probably try to have like overkill, like murder them in the first ten pages. I would probably. I was thinking about that uh, earlier today, actually. Like, yeah, if they showed up in Red Knight, I'd have overkill kill them, and I was like. Well, how would he kill him? I was thinking maybe he would rip off Dub's head and then shove it up Hawk's ass until he died from dysentery. I don't know. That would probably be maybe Overkill's method. Um, but why am I so... I mean, there's so much off... I mean, we have the world potentially ending, and we have this dead man, uh, Dub style. I didn't even know there were a couple, but uh, they have this this relationship stuff, which is really kind of annoying and boring, actually. I think it's really badly written. And, uh, uh I, I, you know, I didn't, didn't really know much about, uh, Dub. I think she was kind of a little prudish or something like that from the Gail Simone issues of, uh, 
Like, they took her to a strip bar and she was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, whatever. You're there at the strip club. Uh, you might as well just enjoy it instead of acting so fucking superior. Anyway. Um, anyway, you know, he wants to have sex with her because he's a guy and he loves her. Those are two of the big reasons. And, like, he has to possess people. So, you know, she's giving me attitude about it. It's like, well, how the hell are we going to have any kind of relationship if I don't jump into a body and fuck you? I mean... I don't know. That's simple logic. If you, if I can't fuck you, there's going to be no relationship. Um, anyway, uh, let's see. Then he tries to do it in the chick. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just, I hate that character. Fuck that character. What, you're in your own goddamn comic. Why ruin this one? Why? You're in your own shitty comic book. Why destroy a, a, a okay, decent book? Oh, uh, I was going to give it three ramp chips, but fuck it, I'm going to give that two ramp chips. Oh, uh, oh, that's it. Anyway, uh, push the button, Lindsay.